This is just a reminder that I am not a healthcare professional. Nothing you see or hear in this video constitutes medical or psychiatric advice. Should you need either of those, please seek out an appropriate professional. Hey guys, welcome back to Tactical Review. So in this video, it's a little bit of a hodgepodge. I've had a few things come together that I think is going to flow into a decent episode. Uh, if it does, if I feel like it does, you will see this. And if I feel like it didn't, this video may never see the light of day. But if you've been paying attention to the channel on social media, you saw that I have just recently finished Nicholas Irving's book, The Way of the Reaper. So I'm going to start with a little bit of a book review. Uh, speaking of Way of the Reaper and, to a lesser extent, uh, Nick's first autobiographical book, The Reaper. Uh, I've, here a few months back, I picked up The Reaper, which talks about Nick's time where he earned the nickname The Reaper in a very unusual deployment, unusual for the amount of activity he saw as a direct action sniper in the Rangers in Afghanistan. It was a really well written book, very easy to follow along, uh, quite a fascinating story. My one small complaint with that book uh, was Nick's tendency to just use a military designation for vehicles or equipment and I found myself needing to do a quick Google search and you know I thought to myself man if he just would have said Chinook I would have known exactly what he was talking about Evidently, uh, that was brought up to Nick from other sources because in Way of the Reaper, wherein uh, Mr. Irving talks about several other non-sequential encounters that he had in his time in the Rangers, he made sure to do that. So if he used an acronym before he used it, he defined it. If he... Uh, when he used hardware or equipment designations, he also gave a more common vernacular. Really easy to follow. Just an absolutely great book. I think I got through it in just two or three days, uh, reading it when I had an opportunity among everything else that I do in my normal day. And it was just, it was a page turner very accessible even for a non-military individual like myself I highly recommend it and then I got to chapter 10 the final chapter of the book uh, that Reaper called his after action report and in chapter 10 he goes back and forth he, he tells some or, or he'll, he'll tell for a little while the events of his very last mission in Afghanistan. And then he'll come forward a few years. I don't remember what the exact time frame is. And he just looks at some of the mental toll that life in general and military service in specific take on our soldiers. And that hit me hard. In specific, uh, he talks about some people in his world who committed suicide. And he talked about his near miss uh, of taking his own life. And that seems like a good time to segue into my first, well, part of the reason for the disclaimer that I gave at the very beginning of this video. And we have something of an epidemic happening in our world today, uh, wherein so many people take their own lives. I, I find it difficult to believe 
that anybody who might stumble upon this video has not had their life touched in some way by that terrible tragedy that is suicide. And so I know that we lose 21 or 22 service members or veterans every day to suicide. But it stems wider than just that. Something like 60% of deaths due to firearms, those deaths that the anti-gunners would want to use to strip you and I of our natural right to self-defense and to be able to stand against tyranny, are due to suicide. No other outside violent crime. And we live in a society that wants to simultaneously say that, well, masculinity is toxic, but then wants to tell a man who's becoming emotional to man up. And the first half of that, masculinity in and of itself is not toxic. There, there's something that's awesome and something that's actually sensitive about a man wanting to be a protector. Not that women can't be protectors too, but to paraphrase John Lovell, what is hard and violent this direction is soft and loving to those people behind that individual. But the problem is, is that once again, when, when it comes to the point where we're struggling or where, where we need to express ourselves emotionally too often in our culture. And obviously I can only speak to the American culture, but certainly America does not hold a monopoly on having an issue with suicide. But in the American culture, at least men are told, well, you need to man up. You just need to bottle that up and shoulder the load and push on. And as somebody who has been touched and whose, whose family has been touched by suicide now coming on more times than I can count, and as somebody who struggled with depression to the point of having only one more non-negotiable, only that non-negotiable that my wife will not clean up the mess that I leave behind. That was it. If you follow the uh, uh, theory of multiverses, I guarantee you that there's a large number where I'm not here to talk to you guys and gals by my own hand. I shudder to think how close I was. I'm shamed to think how close I was. To know that at one point in my life I said suicide is the coward's way out. And to know that I was right there and I said, that's fine, I'm a coward. My wife just won't clean up the mess. All right, first, I guess I want to talk to everybody. Because talking about suicide has developed its own stigma in our society. There's this concept that, well, but if somebody's struggling emotionally or, or struggling with depression... And we talk, and I try to talk to them about suicide and see where they are and how they're doing. Well, that might put the idea in their head. Friends, I guarantee you that if that's where they are, it won't be you saying, "Hey, man, how, how you doing? You, you seem like you're just having a rough time. You're you're not thinking of hurting yourself." That's not going to be what puts that idea in their head. At my darkest, at my lowest, nobody ever had to ask me that for that temptation to be there. So if you see somebody in your world who looks like they're struggling, don't let that be your excuse. Oh, I don't, I don't want to put the idea in their head. Because you being willing to step up and stand there and say, I'm right here with you. Don't you dare let go. Help, let me help you shoulder that load. That won't be what pushes them over the edge, but it absolutely might be what pulls them back from it. And to those of you who might stumble across this video, 
And maybe that's where you are. Maybe you're in that place where you feel like inside is just an ocean of tar and you're you're trying to cross it on a little rowboat and you know if you fall over the edge that you're going to sink beneath and never come out. I've been there. I feel that. I can promise you a couple of things. I can promise you I understand how it is that something that is seemingly insignificant is what takes you right to the edge. I understand that. And I also promise you that if you can persevere, when you look back, you, you won't understand how it was that you were so close. I'm not making little of where you are, but one of the best verses in the Bible is it came to pass. Now I'm taking it out of context, but whatever, whatever is there for you, it came to pass. Whatever that problem is, it came to pass. And I guarantee you, guarantee you that you have people that if they knew would help, if they knew would help you shoulder that load. I know, I know it's not the manly thing to do to say, I need help. It's not the independent thing. If you're not a man watching this, if you're a woman who's watching this and you're there and you're struggling, men don't have the monopoly on this either. And I know it's not the independent and strong thing to do to ask for help, but it's so important. And something that might help. I'm not going to say this will help. And this is a good segue to the last thing I want to talk about. Uh, Something that might help is start working on squaring away the physical at risk of being insensitive because I understand that sometimes what puts you in that dark place is an injury or is a sickness. And, And so obviously that's an exception. And once again, I am not a healthcare professional, physical or mental, though I've been called mental more than once. There's something powerful about starting down that path of taking charge of your physical well-being. And I definitely understand how if you've let your physical well-being go, how that helps push you into a dark place. The other reason that I want to talk about physical fitness here is due to a comment on my five minute to war video and it's something that I've been wanting to touch on Uh, I've seen a meme that really got me thinking about this and the gist of the idea is you've got all these people who want to talk about ready ready for the big luau let's let's say it that way so that maybe this video doesn't get flagged but you have people who who Yo, oh, you know, I've got my rifle and I've got my ammunition and, and I'm ready for the big luau. But those same people have to take a a, a, a rest stop between the couch and the, and the refrigerator. Couldn't run around the block to save their life, let alone go out on a 10 mile ruck. Uh, you may be asking yourself, and, and so you may be asking yourself, what? basis of why should I listen to this guy where it comes to physical fitness I'm just going to tell you where I was where I've been and where I am now and then you can make your decision if you want to give any weight to these next couple of minutes of this video so growing up I I never really had any kind of desire for strenuous physical activity I, my first job, I worked construction. I wasn't adverse to physical labor, but to go out and run without something chasing me, that concept was foreign. To jump on a bicycle and travel for double digit or more mileages, that, there's no way I would have done that. So then I went off to college and uh, a lot of you guys 
know either from personal experience or seen it in friends, uh, the, the freshman 15 can be definitely a very real thing. As a matter of fact, I gained in my first semester my freshman 15 and somebody else's who left theirs laying around. Got married uh, after my first year of college and through the course of feeling like my wife and I needed to kind of you know eat, I ended up, now keeping in mind that I'm about 5 foot 11, ended up at about 230 pounds and 40-45% body fat. And it took me really getting disgusted with what I saw in the mirror to make some lifestyle changes. Now I've made missteps along the way, but I started figuring out, number one, there's no magic pill you're going to take, no magic thing you're going to drink. If you do a crash diet, if you do a fad diet, you're not going to build the discipline. You, you, you can lose the weight. Absolutely. I've seen it. I've seen it a lot. I, I've now been very dedicated at trying to maintain a reasonably healthy uh, lifestyle and physique. Say reasonably. I still have a sweet tooth, but for about five years. And I've, I kind of started this journey 10 years ago now. So in that time, I've seen a lot of people make a a concerted effort to lose weight. And they were very successful at it for a very short amount of time. The fact of the matter is, is that the definition of insanity has been stated as thus, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So you can't expect to do some sort of crash fad diet or or take a bunch of pills and lose a bunch of weight and then go back to doing what you've always done and expect to maintain a healthy lifestyle. So hopefully there's a lot of information to dissect here. Hopefully I'll have an opportunity and figure this out and get um, a couple of resources that I've put together linked in the description text um, give you some place to start with calorie intake uh, hydration super important and some some sort of physical activity okay especially if for instance I'm an IT guy in my day job so that involves a lot of sitting around I have to make a concerted effort to get up and move around. It's part of the reason that I love having a fitness tracker. But I've always been a geek. I like numbers. Uh, I use my fitness pal to log my calories and kind of get an idea of incoming calories versus expended calories. You can get as deep with that as you want or as shallow as you want. But there's just a couple things before this video gets way too long. I constantly tell my athletes, and and this is more my spring athletes where I'm I'm coaching track and field and dealing with throwers who think that they don't need to do anything else. I feel like every athlete needs to have a baseline of fitness that they can at least do a 10-minute mile without stopping and walking anywhere in it. I feel like that unless you have a physical uh, reason, uh, either a disability or an injury, unless you have something like that going on, that's probably a good baseline for just about everyone. As a runner in races, I've seen folks in their 60s and in their 70s, some of whom outran me. Now, just because you can't go out and do that right now doesn't mean that you're a failure and it's time to give up. It means that's something to work towards. I highly recommend having some sort of weight training regimen, even if it's just body weight and you do push-ups and pull-ups. All right, some sort of weight training regimen in there as well. Hours and hours and hours of videos could be made as to why that is. But if you just want some place to start, if you're not able to run a whole mile without stopping and walking, that's that's number one. 
forget the time, all right? Just start with getting to the point you can do a mile without stopping. And two, start doing some sort of load bearing, whether you're actually getting into a weight room or whether you're just dealing with body weight. This covers a couple of things here. Number one, response to that comment on my five minutes to war video, absolutely. If you actually think that you are going to uh, help be part of that 3%, might be more, might be less, that 3% and, and you're going to you know, do whatever it is you think you're going to do in the big luau, no you're not. Not if you, not if you can't put on 70 pounds of gear, 60 pounds of gear, including your rifle or whatever, and actually get out there and move. No, you're not. All right, but two, number two here, starting to focus on your physical fitness, which doesn't have to be necessarily an expensive venture. Working on getting your physical self squared away can have a positive impact on your mental health. And the inverse of that has some truth to it, too, because when I was struggling with depression, I would not get out of my house and go do physical activity. It's conjecture. But had I found just that little bit of willpower to go out and start taking care of my physical self, I think that could have helped me with the mental. I thank God that I never went off the edge I thank God for every person in my life who helped me get through that. Uh, and I thank God that he helped bring me through that situation. So anyway, I hope I hope you got something good out of this video. Uh, if, if nothing else, make sure whether you go to your library or you buy it in print form or you choose to do an audio book, Definitely, Way of the Reaper, well worth your time. And I think, uh, I think that when you get through the end of the book, you'll understand what made me feel like all of these subjects tied together, because they do seem a little scatterbrained. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I, I do have more of the normal content on the way. We've still got knives to test. You know, we've got, we've got gear coming in. Uh, I've, I've got ammo on the way to start beating up on that Palmetto State rifle. But I just felt like this was an opportune video. So there you go. For right now, uh, we've just crossed 250 subscribers in the past week or so. So uh, up until March 17th, 2020, you guys can go to bit.ly forward slash TR250GAW, link in the description, and get yourself signed up for the 250 subscriber giveaway. That drawing will be done live on the March 18th live stream. So right now you've got about a week and a half yet to register if you haven't. Just remember, you must be 18 or older to enter, a resident of the United States, void where prohibited. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can do that over on Patreon. You guys just help out the channel, help with buying accessories and ammunition, all the things that it takes to keep the channel going. If you'd like to help support the channel, but you're not in a position to do so on Patreon, you can head over to the Tactical Review Merchandise Store, pick yourselves up a shirt or a coffee cup, and the channel gets just a few dollars off of every purchase there. So you can show your support for your Second Amendment right while helping to support the channel. If neither of those trip your fancy, I would appreciate you at least sharing the videos and sharing the channel. Appreciate a thumbs up on the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you're watching on YouTube, click that notification bell so you see when new content is uploaded. If you're not following the channel on social media, that's the thing you should be doing. You'll see the username up on your screen. I am on Instagram and Facebook. On social media, you get some behind the scenes, uh, you get some behind the scenes pictures 
you'll get some political commentaries, just a little bit of a deeper look into what makes me tick. Don't look too deeply, it can be frightening. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for your support of the channel and here in this first year. And until next time, shoot straight, stay safe.